Up next, one of several very important video updates on the interesting case of Helena Hutchins, Joel Souza, and Alec Baldwin. Now, one of the most important crucial elements to realize about this case, okay, is that Mr. Baldwin says certain things in public and certain public statements that are meant to reassure the existing audience that there's absolutely, you know, nothing going on here. But what you're going to hear, very, very important to keep this in mind as well, in this video and in a few of the follow-up videos, are testimony from first-hand firing pin experts, people who have dealt with sets all the time, they have crafted and created the solutions for use on existing movie sets as well as Hollywood sets. And they're all going to show you in real detail here how what Mr. Baldwin describes as having happened could not have actually occurred. That's the key with some of these short videos. So one of the key things that I want to point out right off the bat, okay, is Alec Baldwin has made the claim all the time that this was just totally non-deliberate, it was absolutely, you know, an accident, and so on, all the time, throughout the media, throughout the press, everywhere. A little bit like Andrew Tate and similar people like Audrey Dunn have made claims about what they did as being totally incidental, by accident. Okay, but in order for that to be correct and for that to be true, right? A firearm works like this. You can see kind of I'm playing with my hand here for a second, but there's a real point to it. It has a firing pin and it has a lever release, okay? So in order for what Mr. Baldwin to state to actually actively be true, two key things have to happen, right? He has to have his hand on the outside of the trigger, but not actually touching the trigger at all, you know, and so on. And he has to also release the lever that sits inside there near the firing pin. Now, in nearly all circumstances, right, when someone on set or someone who is choreographing this type of issue is dealing with the physical firearm, okay, they're going to check automatically what's called the hammer or the hammer switch inside the firearm itself, along with the firing pin, to be positive, you know, nothing can happen. They do that because, again, it's the number one key ingredient anyone does on a set, whether it's a Hollywood set, a studio set, or a film set, okay? They do it no matter what. And the reasoning for doing so is they know these exact parts of the law. They know certain things can occur, can and do occur. And so they do this by fire testing it, Pulling the hammer back, you know, and yanking the lever down so they can determine nothing got caught on the pin. They want to be positive that anything going on with the firing pin goes on offset and never on the actual studio. Now, it can be confirmed based upon eyewitness testimony and now more than four separate statements and also issues that I'll show on the diagram uh, for the gun that this gun was not just a simple prop gun to start with. And in addition, it can be confirmed that Alec Baldwin did absolutely none of these things. Not on any of the actual sets he was on for Rust. And also, the key thing is, he didn't even check the firing pin sequence, apparently, even one time, which is what you're required to do to avoid that very failsafe where the hammer might fail or something might occur that could cost the company later millions. So we're going to talk about this specific key point. I can guarantee you one thing though, because of where the hammer is placed and because of how the firing pin system works with the ignition, so that this type of fail safe is in place for it to not ever happen anywhere, what Alec Baldwin states or claims actually happened with this gun most certainly did not happen. And we're going to prove it here. But we're going to prove it with some physical demonstrations where I'll also show you kind of a chart of what the gun looks like. <laughs> One of the key points. 
And since the assistant producer actually pled guilty, it's guaranteed in this particular case that it didn't happen. But, as you know, that has to be proven to a jury of 12 peers uh, and a few others in the audience. Quite a few others, so that they know anything that they're saying about how this firearm was cocked, loaded, set, or shot off and fired is untrue from how Alec Baldwin has suggested all this time to the press. Because you not only have to check where the hammer is going to load, you have to check where the volley is going to load as well, whenever you even take this so-called prop gun or gun out to actually use it in exhibit. And we're going to go over that. That and more up next on the JTC channel. Thank you. A forensic examiner, they went back and they did some long-term studies and long-term testing of the 45 Colt caliber pistol. And they found out it could not have fired without the trigger being pressed with pressure. With the hammer in the quarter and half cock position, the gun could not be made to fire without a pull of the trigger, the report states. And with the hammer fully cocked back in the position they are suggesting, as shown in some of the original um, gun diagrams, it could not be made to fire without a pull of the trigger deliberately pointing towards the intended target. With the hammer decocked on a loaded chamber, the gun was able to detonate a primer without a pull of the trigger when the hammer was struck directly, which is only seen in this type of revolver. In most cases, the trigger wasn't pulled, is what Alec Baldwin claimed. I didn't pull the trigger. So this is proof, and if there were, if, as if there was even further proof needed. This is proof that everything Alec Baldwin stated in his interview was an absolute Here, lie. Here, is the inside, essentially, more or less the inside diagram um, in a specific respect of a chambered semi-automatic pistol or semi-automatic uh, handgun. Actually, originally belongs to essentially a uh, Smith & Wesson. There's another diagram on these specific um, firearms, and that will be covered also uh, in depth when looking at a, another specific different, uh, different case file, which is kind of related to this. All right, so I've given you a full schematic and diagram here. So as you can see, they have the treble and they have the hammer. And it's impossible to mistake the fact that you have basically the hammer in a specific position for firing any type of shot, right? The volley is cleared, you know, everything about the chamber is cleared and it's spring-loaded. This is essentially a demonstration of um, what the insides of that firearm, you know, the insides of that so-called prop gun, in this case, uh, look like. So in this example, you can see if there's any kind of pressure placed on the trigger or anything in here in any way is out of sync or syncs up with the hammer, then that round is going out of that gun. And it's going to explosively come out of that gun at a very high re rate of uh, speed because you can't mistake that. You know, it's set up to do that the volley is clear the hammer is uh in position now with the firing pin and when that hits it's going to blast out and it's going to shoot somebody and potentially it may kill somebody all right so i'm showing you this is a physical example essentially of what they're talking about what's on the inside of the actual pressure trigger and on the inside of the firearm and the firearms physical attributes when they're talking about this gun Alec Baldwin was holding. Okay? Now, I'm allowed to do this. I will let you know that because, again, me, my associate, and so on, we have no citizenship with the United States. So I'm, a, I'm allowed a lot of leeway in being able to show you physically and demonstrate literally how this goes 
Now this goes down. So when that occurs, and this comes out, the spring will load because the hammer is out of position. And if there's any kind of question on that, you can check uh, on one of the diagrams. You know, you can check a physical handgun if you want. If you have access to a mock handgun or anything like that, you can check it right there. So when it goes and that hammer goes off, it's going to trigger the firing pin right there automatically. So no matter what anybody has said to the contrary, that round will come exploding out of that gun. And there's no way to be able to mistake that fact. So what this essentially means, what this proves, is that whoever is holding the firearm, whoever is holding the gun, knows full well what that gun is going to do if they have any kind of pressure on the trigger or if they touch that gun a specific way. So it's Alec Baldwin in this case, that's fine. It's still the fact that the same exact rules apply <clears throat> all the way across this whole entire situation. He's touching it. He gets anything about his finger on the pressure trigger. That round is coming out of the gun. And he can be held liable for discharging that round deliberately. In other words, on purpose. Okay, Not just discharging the round, but discharging it on purpose. Okay, That's a very key ingredient to watch. So when you see that, there's a spring-loading trigger that's inside that gun. They all say, oh, it's a prop gun. No, this is on any of these firearms, including the one that we're speaking about specifically when they're talking about they have it on a movie production and so on. It's exactly like, like this. So even if he wasn't out to, if, if you can't easily prove he was out to go after somebody, he knew he was going to shoot that gun. Period. He knew that. He knew that ahead of time. And there isn't anybody who can argue otherwise that he didn't know that. He says, look at that. The trigger, the way the firing pin lines up, and the way the hammer directly crosses with the firing pin. When that spring goes off, that round is going out of the gun. So he knew when he shot it, he's going to hit someone. Okay? And that's really a key element to this whole case. It changes a lot of things. And I thank you for uh, giving me some time with this give kind of a physical uh, mock-up, kind of a demonstration of what goes on. So he's standing there, he's standing at the rust set, he has this firearm, which is a little bit older, the spring is a little bit older, but as soon as he touches that, and it's basically been demonstrated now that he did touch the trigger, he knew he was going to be shooting that gun. If he didn't know that, why didn't he like Everybody else who ever goes, you know, onto a uh, production or anything for that matter, fire the gun up in the air. Do actual testing. No, none of that was ever done. It wasn't conducted by anyone. So he knew when he physically was holding it, it was going to do what they said it was going to do. It was going to discharge the round, right? So the fact that it's going to discharge the round actually makes Alec Baldwin 100% liable, I would agree, for discharging the round. So it's a very interesting uh, key detail that a lot of people miss. Well, they are, of course, experts. And they confirm that Alec Baldwin actually legally cocked the gun. By cocking the gun, that changes the whole playing field yet again. So it's very, very interesting. Uh, it depends on the show. It does. Because the thing is, the, the thing with using a real gun is you get the, I mean, you get the true noise, you get the smoke, you get, it, it definitely is a very impactful prop, but obviously these props have to be used very, very carefully, so the shows that I have worked on that involved guns, anyone, any actors, any crew, anybody who had to handle the gun had to be trained on it. There's certain safety protocols you have to follow. Yeah. One show, we tested the gun every night before the show to make sure that it, A, wouldn't get jammed or go off by accident or something. It's usually a whole process, yeah. That's for theater, so it, it does make a little bit of sense that you can't recreate the same sound effects convincingly. Right. But oh, in yeah. a movie, you feel like yeah. it would be it would be different. Um, and then I am also surprised that they have real guns. Besides the live round that was in the gun, 
there were other live rounds. People that ask is why the hell? Why the hell were all of these live rounds on set right. and not just and not blanks, which are designed to mm-hmm. like what you were saying? Um, but this was but the gun. It was a live. It was a live round. Um, and yeah, that's the really crazy. And thing. Alec Baldwin says up and down that he was handed that that it was announced, and I think people, other people have attested to this, that it kind of, as the gun moves through the chain of custody from the, the armorer, the person whose job it is on set to handle the weapon, hands it to the assistant mm-hmm. director, who hands it to Baldwin each time, like, it is being announced, cold gun. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, this reminds me of going back to torts, and there's a but-for cause, like, there's, like, a whole chain of who started but, the fire. <laughs> Now, after a year long, after a lengthy investigation, prosecutors in New Mexico say that they are that they int- say that they intend to charge Baldwin. He is not. This has not happened yet. Um, they intend to charge mm-hmm. Baldwin and the film's armorer, Hannah Gutierrez Reed, with involuntary manslaughter charges. And, but already adding a little. Uh, adding, making things a little more difficult for these two, is that assistant director David Halls, who Baldwin says is the one who handed him the gun, will be aiding the prosecution because he has already pled guilty to a charge of negligent use of a deadly weapon. And so the main, oh. and so the main question that everyone's asking is: Is Alec Baldwin going to go to jail? Yeah, because. Just for a little context here, too, uh, a conviction on involuntary manslaughter in New Mexico usually carries a sentence, carries a possible sentence of up to 18 months in prison. However, if a gun is involved, the mandatory minimum prison term becomes five years. Yeah. And so everyone's singing like, holy, holy cow, is Alec Baldwin going to like get locked up for a couple years mm-hmm. for this? Yeah. I'm gonna. I know he doesn't like it, but I'm going to because the guy's smart and we love him. Uh, Stephen Ellison, S- Steve Ellison, Esquire. Steve. Steve. <laughs> who, who, we love who, Steve. He's our biggest fan. Who, who, who He's a dedicated a lot of great listener stuff. too. So hey there, we know you're Oscar listening. Oscar Feinblatt. <laughs> the man is a longtime uh, former practicing attorney and um, mm-hmm. he's very smart. And what he was, what he has said is that. At the start of this investigation, it would be very hard for the prosecution to prove that Alec Baldwin mm-hmm. is guilty, that there is, is guilty of involuntary manslaughter. First off, we don't know what, uh, we don't know what evidence prosecutors have, but if going off initial news reports of what happened on set, it would be difficult to prove that he committed a crime beyond a reasonable doubt because other people are handing Uh him this gun however (laughs) however (laughs) alec baldwin did the one thing we have told people not to do even (laughs) on this podcast on Uh findlaw.com and and on this podcast what what do we to what do we tell you to do you have one job if the police want to ask you questions Shut the hell up. And get a lawyer. (laughs) We don't care if you're a celebrity. Or if you're innocent. Still don't talk to them. Get an attorney. People falsely confess to things all the time. Because this was... Because Alec looks like he might have been able to be fine until he talked. The day that this happened, he went and sat down with two detectives and talked with them for more than an hour answering oh my gosh. answering every without without attorneys. an attorney without an attorney they Alec Baldwin has been arrested before for punching people yeah for he should know scrapes with with paparazzi photographers right. and stuff Alec Baldwin has been read mm-hmm. his rights before and mm-hmm. he asks he asks my only question is am I being charged with something no police say nope nope reading his rights which they apprised him of. They apprised him of his right to remain silent, but they noted that it was, quote, mm-hmm. just a formality. It's never just a form. No, it's at the never. End of the interview, it's at Miranda the end rights, of the, folks. We had a whole episode about this. At the end this. of the interview, they told him that, they to- they informed him that the cinematographer, Helena Hutchins, had died. He thought, Alec Baldwin thought that she had just been shot. He didn't know that she was dead mm-hmm. yet. Mm. So this was recently and way after the wrongful death suits 
stuff had wrapped up then? I mean, it would have been right after the accident if she didn't even know that she was yeah, dead. Yeah, the interview with the police was the day it happened. The yeah. day it happened. Yeah. He, the, when, when police came up, police show up and they say, you know, this is a crime scene. That's all well and good. They're doing their job. You, mm-hmm. as a private citizen who presumably just does not want to go to jail, Uh does not have to answer questions. So I'll stop it right there. The number one mistake, of course, that was made, however, was he started going on the record with everyone, with the police, with the press, and many others, saying, I did absolutely nothing. And, of course, lying. When it's always the cover-up that gets you and never the crime. So lying to prosecutors, lying to the government in itself is a major crime. So he committed perjury by saying he didn't know anything about you know, how the weapon was discharged. Then he admits in the same interview not too long after, and a very important podcast has finally brought this to the surface, which... Um, I appreciate I'm going to let you listen to that um, a bit later. He admits that he cocked the gun. He physically cocked the gun and he had it intended to be pointed at a target. So you can't have it both ways. You can't have it as this was just a trigger problem. It was a trigger misfire. And also you as the personal individual deciding to cock the gun, realistically, just cocking the gun, going like this, and cocking the gun all on your own, and triggering the firing pin, you know, afterwards as a result. You can't have it both ways. And so, this is going to be a major, major issue that's ultimately going to come and surface directly in the courtroom, too. Um, He not only lied to investigators, he lied to everyone else, but he lied about the way that he was holding the gun. He actually physically cocked the gun. And he admits that later. In the exact same way that you cock a handgun when you point it at someone in a restaurant or in a parking lot or anything uh, of that kind of nature, he did that exact same thing with uh, the so-called gun on the Rust shooting. And that gun most certainly, according to experts, wasn't really a prop gun. It was a real gun. So this is going to be fascinating. And as always, folks, what are your feelings, ideas, and thoughts on this interesting uh, new development? doesn't really matter if they've got, you know, somebody they claim is going to be the celebrity prosecutor or something like that. These are the serious issues they are discussing right now in relationship to the court, to the case that's in court. And I just uncovered it very recently. Um, It certainly makes it a lot more interesting. What do you guys think about the fact that he deliberately cocked the gun? And he had his hand essentially on the firing trigger and physically forced the trigger, pressed the trigger. Didn't ever do any kind of tests, didn't do anything with the gun at all, but actually held the gun, cocked the gun deliberately, pointed and fired. It sure changes everything about this case, doesn't it? Oh boy, you bet it does. It certainly does. So sound off in the comments with your real ideas and your real insights. We always love hearing from your personal feedback first, of course. And there's much more on the way. Thank you. Okay, so as shown in schematics, um, in similar schematics as well, the frame for the metal or polymer housing of the handgun holds all the other parts. So whether it's a handgun, meaning a pistol handgun, or for example a Colt 45, which just has a slightly different trigger guard and spring loaded inside of it. Everything about a firearm runs and operates the exact same way. You have the grip. The grip is the part of the pistol the shooter holds with two sections, the front strap and back strap. In semi-auto handguns, it houses a magazine as well. You have the trigger guard, which is the protective loop that surrounds the trigger to prevent the trigger from being accidentally pulled. It can be circular or rectangle. 
you have the magazine release switch, which is the button or mechanism of a semi-auto pistol which allows the operator to remove the magazine. And then you have, of course, the muzzle or the volley that's inside there, you know, near the firing pin. Now, according to this, this is just one schematic, right? The barrel is the tube where the bullet passes through during ignition. Once the ignition lights up, it discharges at maximum velocity. That's what the muzzle is for, it's to actually, hopefully, uh, halt the velocity, slow it down a little bit. And then you have what's called the bore or the interior surface of the barrel. The rifling lands in groves which rotate the barrel to grant it gyroscopic stability. The muzzle, of course, which is the front part of the barrel where the bullet exits. And then the chamber. That's the cavity at the back end of the barrel where the cartridge inserts prior to ignition. So, he's either a first grade student who's never really held a firearm before, and there's so many movies that he worked in. That's probably untrue. So he's either a first grade student who's never held a firearm, or he just has no cognitive you know, awareness of his surroundings. It's one or the other. It's what experts have been saying. And in this particular case, I would most certainly go with the option that he just has no cognitive awareness of his surroundings. He was holding this gun, and he deliberately cocked the gun. Something you never, ever do if you are involved in a production, especially without talking to literally anyone, you know, there. He drove the slide back and forth. He hit the cock switch. He brought the recoil back because there's a spring inside the gun that's near the trigger, right? That disabled any kind of safety there. And he had his finger. This is the most important key part I want you guys to remember all throughout this. He had his finger directly on the firing trigger. You didn't have it off of it like you're required to in any kind of situation when you go into any movie or anything of that kind of regard, you know, anywhere, in fact. He had it directly on the trigger. He pressed and he released. Held the gun, cocked it deliberately, spring-loaded the spring, and from that point, the bullet explodes outward and hits its target. And now he's complaining to everybody and saying, oh, I didn't know it was a cold gun. Which is confirmed to be a lie since the very beginning. How was it a cold gun? We know now for a fact it was never a cold gun. It was never a cold gun, was it? It kind of changes the whole dynamics of the entire case. The metal or polymer protrusion which forces the action to ignite the chamber cartridge is squeezed when you squeeze the trigger. The trigger bar is a piece of metal which deactivates the handgun's internal safety when the trigger gets pulled. And the recoil is, of course, the spring that discharges the round, or in this case, the live round, right into the target. So he was doing all this, and he was moving the actual spring back and forth with the firearm. He, presses, he points it over at the target, he presses it deliberately and he fires. Everything he said after that point has apparently been proven to be a lie, which makes everything about this whole entire situa uh, situation, I would say, certainly a little more clear cut. We see he knew everything about the fact that the gun obviously had a front sight and a rear sight. You know, it wasn't like your typical pistol. But it's still at a front sight because it's a Colt 45. That's correct. You know, and he had everything necessary to be able to do what anyone else would do, and he chose not to do it. So what does that mean, folks? That means he cocked the gun, he pointed it, and he fired it at the target, knowing full well what he was doing. Which is a very interesting aspect to this whole case. What do you guys have 
to say about that so far? How do you feel about that? What are your insights and ideas around that interesting uh, turn of events? Be sure to sound off in the comments below. Thank you again. Hope this has been as educational uh, for you as it has been for all of us involved. I always appreciate it. Be sure to get this video out there you know, to the general public and get everyone discussing this very important key development around the Alec Baldwin case in New Mexico. This occurred in broad daylight and it occurred in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And as a result, the victim, Helena Hutchins, is no longer with us. And my best blessings goes to all of the Hutchins family and also, at this time, the family of Director Joel Souza as well. Thank you. And thank you for your service. Much more to come. A veteran prop master who was on set with David Halls by the way, David Halls pled guilty to actual crimes occurring on the shooting of the Rust set in New Mexico. Has called absolute BS on Alec Baldwin's claims, all of Alec Baldwin's claims, that state he did not deliberately pull the trigger of the gun that fired a live round on the set. Killing cinematographer Helena Hutchins. Speaking exclusively to The Sun, Bill Davis, retired cop and expert who's worked on more than 300 films and TV shows as well as sets, disputed the chain of events outlined by the actor during the interview. Guns never just fire themselves, particularly when it's a single action 45 Colt revolver that he used at the time this occurs, he states. Simply put, his excuse is bullshit. He continued. When quizzed about how common it is or how often you may see a gun malfunction and fire without the trigger being pulled, Davis responded, it never occurs. It is uncommon to the maximum. He added that he thinks Baldwin is full of shit. In an article published on the reload.com, firearms Reporter Stephen Gutowski stated that at first glance Baldwin's claims appear far-fetched. Modern firearms, even rec uh, replicas, have safeties designed to prevent them from firing without the trigger pulled. In Baldwin's case, though, the claim is at least somewhat more believable. That's because the gun involved is more prone to firing without the trigger being pulled. Again, it's impossible. That's the reality here, because they went back and an expert tested this gun and they took it apart and looked at the schematics and they showed it could not ever occur. It could not discharge that round live, that live round, without the hammer being triggered by pressing and pulling the trigger back with the forefinger. There was no mistaking, you had to press firmly the trigger for that round to discharge. They state, the next, the next scenario is some sort of mechanical issue with the gun. Kutowski uh, writ again for the brief. He stated, it is much more likely the trigger was depressed while Baldwin was manipulating the hammer, or he just pulled the trigger after the hammer was cocked. No, they proved actually already that the opposite is true. He pulled the actual trigger, folks. And when he did that and he cleared the volley, he knew that he was pulling the trigger for a gun that was potentially a live gun. And that's a very, very key detail to everything that's ever been going on um, since the start with this case. I'm not clear on exactly what it indicates... Uh, precisely yet. However, at minimum, it indicates he deliberately pulled the trigger. You know, and he's guilty, no question, of manslaughter in this particular instance, of actual manslaughter. What level of manslaughter? That's going to require going into the actual, uh, 
log for the gun, looking at how the trigger was pulled, looking at many different things. But he's guilty of manslaughter, is the bottom line. There's no, you know, mistaking that the fact that the gun was loaded with live rounds, was never loaded with dummy rounds, okay? Do not forget this key aspect. It was never loaded with dummy rounds or blank rounds. It was deliberately loaded with a certain specific number of live rounds. And so he knew, at minimum, that something was going to occur here. Everything was at her direction, they claim. This was a marking rehearsal, Baldwin stated. And Hutchins said, hold the gun lower, go to your right. Eventually, Baldwin said he ended up aiming the gun right below her arm, or her armpit, which is where he claims Hutchins told him she wants me to hold the gun. He then said he needed to cock the gun. Again, a lot of things are very interesting that are in this interview and the other interview. He doesn't reveal any of this when he speaks to the actual investigators and the police. He says, I never pulled the trigger. I never cocked the gun. But then later on, you see him deliberately saying, in front of all the press and everyone else, he says, I cocked the gun and I released the trigger. And he means by saying cocking the gun, he deliberately cocked the hammer and he cocked the gun and released the trigger. So that's proof that pretty much anything that he was saying before is fictional. Okay? And again, that makes him guilty of manslaughter. Yes. And then the other question is, what else might it suggest? You know, in some people's opinion, uh, after getting really down to the nitty gritty details of how this gun functions, of how every gun functions, some are saying it may even move him into the murder one category. Because if he, that's the key thing here, right? If he knew that he was deliberately cocking the gun and knowing everything that's occurred on all of these different movie sets from before, if he knew and was proven to know that he was deliberately cocking the gun and essentially aiming it, for example, at Helena Hutchins, what does that mean? And in the same way, what does that mean as he aimed the gun directly at Joel Souza or Souza? You know, we always appreciate hearing your feedback most of all first. So be certain to sound off in the comments down below. And give us your personal insights and personal ideas on this developing story. Thank you again. We always appreciate hearing from you, most of all. More to come. last thing is that similar people have been commenting on it, you know, all the way along. The implications of what it means with the hammer having literally done kind of a click or um, a uh, reflex, a reflex movement where it backfires, it gets stuck uh, with the actual firearm, makes it really now, pretty explicitly clear to me um, 
that because Alec Baldwin's you know finger was actually pressed in the place where we are now understanding it was pressed, that this was certainly a deliberate uh, shooting in many cases, much, much more almost indicates it being a much more kind of intentional move than even what occurred in certain ways in the Alex Murdoch uh, case and similar things like that. So I have no question at all that what this proves based upon the significant uh, turn of events in the evidence that the firearm had to have been discharged in some fashion intentionally, you know. And, of course, people can say, well, Baldwin, you know, has just always been this person is kind of a protected entity, but he doesn't really have that uh, so-called status now. I mean, he doesn't have as much money, for example, as as Murdoch does. So I really don't know. You know, and then other people have been speaking about that whole issue of Buster and so on. And I feel like, though, to get, get to there, we need to first get through the whole issue of who done it with this firearm, you know, um, problem. And there's no way conceivable now from where I've stood in examining the evidence and started really looking over the reports of the scene directors that... Baldwin could have, any in any kind of fashion, accidentally been holding it and firing the trigger. Because anyone else who's in the industry, they always do a number of cold shots, they do a number of routine shots and so on, at the wall or even right up in the air, before they ever even go out and attempt anything like this. So, you know, I could tell right off the bat, there's no sign of it being unintentional, which changes everything about the case. Some may be correct when they assert that perhaps that charge ultimately needs to be upgraded slightly to almost murder one or homicide, in other words. Because to say it was just manslaughter, in a way, diminishes the implication of the fact that, hey, the hammer and the firing switch can't ever be done by mistake. They have to be done with an intended target in mind. Just an interesting uh, food for thought there. But we got to get there first, and we're going to look at that in the schematic again of the firearm. Because what else except the truth is going to get us where we need to go. Thank you.